and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. The fragrance market is a $7 billion industry that is expected to keep on growing. And JJ Vittoria, the founder of Olfactory, has shaken up an industry that has been around for centuries. Olfactory is a modern, fine fragrance brand that allows people to create custom fragrances with scents that are created by the world's top perfumers using the highest quality natural and sustainable ingredients found in the finest luxury products at a fraction of the cost. JJ, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome to the studio. I'm so happy to be here. I've been here a few times. Yeah, and when I say a few times, I mean way too many times because <laughs> I love your brand. I've actually made my own perfume here. The cool thing about Olfactory for me is everything's customizable. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so actually the custom part was not in the original really? plan. So the, the, originally what we wanted to do here was we, you know, I wanted to make a brand, a brand that was like, had so a lot of the elements you see in fashion these days, affordable, mm -hmm. but luxury products. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make these really high quality, beautiful fragrances, world's top perfumers, but we wanted to be able to make it more accessible, fun, interactive, as opposed to the kind of darker, a little more exclusive yeah. you know, environments you, you can get um, in some of these other brands. So because we were bottling everything on site, mm -hmm. what, what that allowed us to do is create this sort of custom experience that kind of came afterwards. Oh. The original idea was just to be like affordable, but ext extremely high quality fragrance. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your background because in researching you, I learned that you really, you don't have what I expected as a background, but in like a really cool way. So you actually have a financial background yeah. and then you started Olfactory. Yeah. Why? I mean, you know, it's one of those things, right? So I grew up interested in fragrance, in mm -hmm. the art of fragrance, but you know, it, I didn't see it as like a business opportunity. I was interested in the art side of things. Mm -hmm. I had um, some family and friends in, in, the, in the business. I think going into, going into sort of uh, the financial uh, business after I, after I um, graduated college, uh, you know, I sort of learned about what it would take to start a business. I think some of that sort of understanding gave me the confidence, um, but also the, the analysis aspect of what it would take to, to make it work, you know, to make something like this, which is a new sort of idea, yeah. and actually make it, make it a business that could actually you know, exist. Yeah, I don't know of anything else like this in New York. Um, I remember like I went on a trip when I was 15 to Italy and they had a perfumery there and I made my own fragrance and I thought it was the coolest thing. So when I learned that you guys were here, I immediately came in the store because I think part of the way you can create a successful business is by doing something that others aren't doing and, and that's something you're doing. So uh, what was the first step? You said you kind of experimented yourself mm -hmm. and then when did you say, okay, I'm actually going to do this? And what was, what was the first thing you did? Yeah, it was not one of those like, you know, <laughs> I think it, was, it was, definitely wasn't like that. So yeah. as I said, I was, yeah, I was working full time. Um, and on the side, I was kind of, as I say, playing around things, also starting to formulate the ideas of what a business would look like, understanding what other businesses in the, in the, in the industry look like. Um, and then just really being driven by the idea of having just really great fragrance. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the basis here. It was always the idea, as I, you know, as I said, about the, um, you know, having affordable but high quality. The idea was just to focus on fragrance. A lot of these retailers have, they have these super ornate and mm -hmm. fancy bottles, these sort of uh, ex like antique, extravagant environments. What well, we wanted to step away from that mm -hmm. and get back to what's in the bottle itself. Yeah. Um, and that actually speaks to the name Olfactory NYC was kind of the whole idea about Olfactory was to get back to your Olfactory senses. Like what is your, what are you actually smelling? Tell me about the process of starting this. Okay. So sure. you have the idea, you have the concept. Did you start an online store first or did you start uh, the in-person store first? Did you do them both together? We knew we had to have a physical presence mm -hmm. as well as an online um, uh, presence. But the problem with physical retail uh, today, obviously, is, you know, it's, 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 it's a cost. It's something that people have to, you know, uh, no one wants to hear about you starting a, a brand that's brick and mortar these days. They want you to be all online. Mm -hmm. But with fragrance, it's one of those products where you kind of need that physical presence somewhere, especially if we don't have like a, 
a celebrity behind it or some sort of, um, we don't have uh, a, a big brand behind it. So the idea with this unknown brand was we had to have a sort of a physical presence, but we also wanted to supplement that with an online uh, business as well. Tell me, how did you market it then, right? So you don't have celebrity endorsement, but you have a really great idea. Mm -hmm. So how did you get people into the store? We didn't have like all the funding in the world. Yeah. And so we, what we had to do is we had to sort of do a lot of Instagram, uh, uh, influencers and that kind of thing, marketing sort of in that way. What we tried to do was we tried to leverage the experience, the experience mm -hmm. aspect of it um, because we're making a custom scent and it's a process. You come to the studio, you create your scent. It's, you know, you, you choose a scent, you choose the name and all that. It's all kind of a sort of, it's a, the whole process while the scent itself doesn't lend itself to a, uh, to a visual medium, mm -hmm. uh, the process does. You can video it, you can show the process and that kind of thing. And so we wanted to kind of leverage that aspect in the marketing of it. Um, and yeah, then and that it, yeah. part's really cool, by the way. So you come in, you smell everything, and then you can add your own individual scents to the bottle. And then you can customize your bottle. So you can choose the color, you can even name it. Yeah, we've got one right here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Nicole. <laughs> this is Nicole. This yeah. Is not, this is not yours, but I uh, No, you, you mine, I wore mine today though. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. in the spirit of this interview. <laughs> on that side of the room is uh, where you start, st so step one, picking one of your core scents mm -hmm. um, as you did. And then on this side behind me is our sort of custom bar, yeah. where you then build off one of the original scents. I have a perfume that I bought in Dubai that I love, but I don't know where to get it. So what, is it possible for someone to come in here and have and like bring a perfume they love and say, how can you guys make this? We get a lot of that. Is uh, that a as thing? you might expect, you get a lot of people who want to recreate a scent. Um, Legally, we can never recreate a scent exactly. Obviously, oh, but there's formulas. Well, formulas are trade secrets. Okay. So uh, even if we did know them, which we wouldn't, um, but we can always take you in that direction. So what ends up happening is that's actually sometimes useful because you can, if you come in with, and you've got something that's super woody and, and rich and earthy, um, we can then show you different things. We know immediately that that's the kind of direction you want to go, gotcha. and we can show you in that, in that way. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Earlier, you briefly referenced funding. Funding in New York for a storefront, not the cheapest thing on earth. Yeah, yeah. So how did you do it? Frank, I mean, originally it was a lot of just reaching out to friends and family. As I said, I knew some people in the industry, so that helped. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to sort of uh, formulate this idea that was a little bit different. And I was also able to, you know, even though it is a storefront, luckily, and this is, you know, for other entrepreneurs out there, there's two sides of every coin with these things. So while storefronts, everyone says, you know, you don't want to start with a brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, because of that, it means that there's prices have come down a little bit, especially now. Oh. Um, so, you know, in COVID times, like you can get good deals. So uh, even so, you know, you're not getting the traffic. So there's, it's a push and pull. Um, we knew we had to have it because of fragrance. Not We wanted to be able to have that interaction right. and because of the custom process that came after. Um, but we were able to just figure out ways that were um, the most cost effective in that way. And yeah, it's sort of because it wasn't, there wasn't a ton of funding um, for an, a brand that wasn't just purely online. Uh, it was more of, it was more of just trying to get as, get revenue up as soon as possible, get the, get the word out there and be able to get to the point where you don't need the funding. Um, you can sustain yourself yes. with your own. So did you use your savings? Did you take out a loan? Did you get investors? Which route did you go? Uh, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I had some of my own savings, um, but also yeah, investors, friends and family, mm -hmm. um, investors, and, um, and, and really just getting up to the point where we were breaking even as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, which was after the first year and a half, we were sort of there. So yeah. it was kind of like at that point, it was easier to convince some other people to come in um, and, and uh, not have to be not on that sort of heavy cash burn that you can get to. So in terms of, I would definitely, you know, the quicker you can get to that point, I think it's just, just takes a whole load off your back because yeah. you're not like losing money all the time. And that was the, that was the idea with us. Do you have any advice for someone that's doing this that would help them get to that break even point faster? Yeah. I mean, well, figure out where you where you can make money, uh, <laughs> where you can, where your best margins are, um, and really just go for that. Uh, you know, don't, you know, you have to, Obviously, you want to get your product out there as much as possible as well. Um, but for us, it was like we we sort of scaled up marketing as we were able to with the with the with the money we had. 
obviously, I think advice would be raise as much money as you can if you can. If you can get access to the, if you can get access to it, um, for sure. Um, but that was, uh, but that was the idea for me. Is also just to prove to yourself that you can do it. Yeah. I think there's something a bit, you know, it's a bit demoralizing. I think if it, well, I mean, for some people, I think I don't have the confidence. I think to have a business that was that would be just losing like more and more and more. Uh, right. I mean, that's just me. I'm, I'm also, not you brave. have a financial <laughs> background. So I think for you, the numbers, which the numbers should be important for anyone, but for you, the numbers are so important yeah. because of that background you have. Yeah, yeah. And so what we tried to do, you know, as I say, the whole idea being affordable luxury fragrance, like how do you mm -hmm. make, how do you do that? We had to just look for savings where we could, we weren't going to save on the, on the fragrance itself. As I said, we wanted uh, to put everything into the fragrance. But the packaging and all that, we had to get kind of innovative on how we used our packaging, how we're able to avoid these high minimums that you get with suppliers. So all of your perfumes, they're unisex. Why did you decide to do it like that? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's really been a trend in the industry yeah. um, towards uh, uh, not branding things so much as female and male. It's yeah. sort of unavoidable a little bit because of the colors. Um, right. But, well, you know, you run out of colors if you don't choose different colors for the yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, too, is it also it all feeds back into the idea of it being less about the packaging and the marketing. The fact of the matter is the perfumers don't create fragrances for men or for women. Oh. That's kind of done once they send it to the marketing department of the brand that they're working for. And then they stick it in black packaging and call it a men's fragrance. And typically that ends up being woody scents. But you could take anything and put it in a darker packaging, yeah. call it that poor homme or whatever. Or, 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 <laughs> yeah, or, or, yeah, or yeah. you know, or you know, femme or whatever. And then and it becomes a, a female or male scent. Uh, you know, we wanted to get it again, we wanted to get away from all of that stuff. And you know, this is more about what do you love to smell? Right. Uh, what and frankly, the unisex fragrances, once they're on a man or on the, once they're on a woman, these these great fragrances. They change on your skin. They, they the do. Ideas, yeah, they change with the wearer, and so you'll have a scent, same scent that's worn by you know a husband and a wife, and it's and it smells different. It's a different uh, it's a different scent on each of them. Um, you said that uh, like we we both could be wearing the same fragrance. It smells different on both of us. Why? So that that's to do with yeah hormones, um, mm. the oils of your your skin, which mix with the scent. You know, as I say, some of the best fragrances how they work and it is 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 because they mix with your your body oils if gotcha. like if they're not good they'll just be sitting there on top of your skin oh. um but the best ones will just will mix in well and they'll and the way they project is by mixing with your with your your body oils as well and so and so that's why you can that's why certain things will smell different on a on a, on a man and a woman i should also you know we we have a we do have a lot of couples that come in and create a scent for each other but it is super oh, that's interesting cute. that's a cute date idea it's a great date idea but it really? is it, it's funny like <laughs> it, it's it's funny because they uh scent is so associative yeah and so like how you your memories end up being the how you interpret these these scents and so for a guy it'll be a rem the same scent like a jasmine will remind them of the, a bush in their grandma's backyard yeah. uh, but then the woman it'll be like it'll remind them of like an ex-boyfriend and so they'll have completely different ways they interpret that That's... scent and it's just and then it, you learn a lot about each other in the way you have you know so it's a fun experience for couples because uh, or, or friends because you learn more things about each other as well as creating a scent. That's so true that a scent can bring back memories. Some yeah. of my favorite scents and me, my least favorite scents bring back specific memories. Yeah. You mentioned like an old boyfriend, Aqua de Gio. Aqua de Gio, yeah. That one? No. Not gonna happen <laughs> ever again. That's a very popular <laughs> scent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, my uh... husband tried to wear that and I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> cannot wear that. It's been ruined. <laughs> So you guys have one location here in Nolita. This is your flagship store. Are you thinking of expanding to other stores at a certain point? Uh, kind of what's your growth strategy with this brand? Yeah, so I mean, you know, obviously COVID has thrown a lot of things up in the yeah, air. We definitely, we definitely um, were before this thinking of opening other, we were, we were looking into another location um, in, in New York City. Um, the idea though is this is more like, I think of it more of like a studio. Yeah. Where we're sort of, you know, because a lot of the days when there are not customers in here, we're playing around with different things, we're making different things. Um, and so I saw it's kind of like a base camp for that, mm -hmm. for that sort of, uh, for that sort of, uh, for playing around. So we definitely want to bring the experience to other cities, um, you know, with the online experience. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that we've now built out. Like you can do the custom uh, experience online. Um, at, How do you do that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so because this is a sort of it's the send creation side is a two step process. You start by uh, picking one of the core sends, and mm -hmm. then you uh, try different versions of your favorite core send. Yeah. We replicate that online with two different uh, sample boxes. So this little box here, this is part of your online experience. Yeah. So this is new. Yeah, it's sort of new. We okay. just weren't really when we had a studio, and we were kind of a new brand. Yeah. You know, it was people coming in and creating the scent, and then online was really more. Once you've made your custom scent, we save the blend on file, and then you can always come back. Uh, you can either come back and recreate it or you can just reorder it online. If the blend is saved online with your mm. profile and you can re and you can just reorder your scent uh, online. Um, so that was more, the online was more for the reordering side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when COVID started, you know, when... <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't worry, every business owner has the yeah, same yeah. story. It's a big sigh right I now. I know, so you're like... like yeah. um, we sort of started trying to figure out how can we recreate this process online? Um, and because it's a two-step process, it, it sort of lended itself a little bit to that. So you start with this um, this box, uh, which has our original core sense, all the core sense you see behind mm -hmm. you um, in this box. And then um, and then once you've found your favorite from those, it comes with a credit. So mm -hmm. it's, this box is $18, mm -hmm. uh, but it comes with an $18 credit oh. to the next step, which is where you pick, you pick your favorite. So let's say you like the Blake, uh, you would then, um, uh, you then get a box that is just versions of the Blake. So you would send you another box called the Tinkerer mm -hmm. box, which is just versions of the Blake. And then you then you can try those. And then your favorite of those comes with another credit towards the full size, which would have. Wait, your... that's brilliant. So you end up, I didn't end up know being you the same did price. it like that. I yeah. thought you had to buy this box and then you had to buy the full price perfume. But no, it all yeah, no. adds up it to. It all adds up to the same price. So and you get all these extra samples that, you know, maybe you want to play around with. So and, smart. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Way to find a solution in a difficult scenario. Yeah, yeah. it's a slower process, right? Because you've got to <laughs> you've got to get the bomb box, then you've got to try it, and then you got to. So it's not just coming into the store and, and having, you know, the same, uh, having it walking out with a fragrance mm -hmm. half an hour later. Um, but it is a way to do it at and home, and you get to play around. And it's, and it's COVID safe, which is the whole goal. <laughs> so how are you marketing this? Yeah, so um, a lot similar to how we we marketed the original experience through you know we're working with uh, influencers online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done more sort of a uh, little more of the TikTok, TikTok, uh, TikTok ads. Is um, that working? TikTok is so new. I just got on it. I'm curious your experience. TikTok is really good for um, I think for active engagement and activation. Yeah. I think TikTok is uh, is a great. Um, is a great tool uh, because it's just it sort of really concentrates on the experience, right? Because right. it's because of the the video nature. I think people are just more engaging. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube is is similar too, right? So YouTube because you can show yeah. the process and you can show the trying on and it gives a little more personality to it. Um, I think it's I think it's it, it's definitely yeah. I mean, definitely better than Instagram in that respect. So for marketing purposes, you found video content is is best for this because it is such an experience yeah yeah so fragrance also because you know i spoke earlier about how our whole brand the whole idea was to focus on the fragrance and not on the packaging right so and like instagram's you know, like yeah, all about exactly. visual so suddenly well you know we have these nice colors but you know for instagram we're always like oh gosh it's just like a bottle you know it's not like what you know what how much can you right. say Right. So, so, but with, with, with the videos and, and, you know, stories, but also, um, on YouTube and, and TikTok, you can, you can really play out that experience, you know, with, with the playing around with these, whether mm -hmm. it's this or with it, whether it's coming into the store and, and, and playing around with the different scents here, it kind of lends itself to the video process. It really shows the, the power of storytelling, I think. I mean, in terms of like the, the storytelling, it's also a story of creation and uh -huh. it's a story of education. Yeah. So people are not just... Um, you know, you don't just see them, you know, uh, taking you through something. You see them as they go from someone who, like, didn't really know about fragrance or didn't really know what they liked, maybe was skeptical of the experience um, mm. because they just weren't into fragrance necessarily. Um, and then at the they end of weren't it, into fragrance. And yeah. then they come here. Like, when I came here with my videographer, he, I, he didn't think he was into fragrance. And, and then he realized he is. <laughs> that's great. And that's See? the power of you're converting. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you're converting. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's what you said about, about the market for fragrance. This is the, the idea of this brand is not just 
getting people who love fragrance, but it's it's expanding to people who don't necessarily, who don't know yet. Yeah. And you know, you uh, as you look at the you know the U.S. specifically is a pretty fragrance dry market in the sense mm. that people here there aren't they're just like a lot of people there are a lot of people who don't really wear fragrance here except for maybe a special occasion and when they do they have one signature scent um, that's true right that's... and then so like but in europe uh, and especially in the middle east you have a fragrance wardrobe which is that's like so which is like you know whether you know same way you have different dresses clothes. or clothes or in your wardrobe you have a fragrance wardrobe which for different seasons different times of day you wear a different fragrance and so, you know, this is what, um, and so the idea here is to sort of just open fragrance up a little bit. Um, because I think the reason why it's, it, you know, it is that way right now in the U.S. is because it's just so expensive to get great fragrances. It is, it is. Another thing I've noticed is there's hotels now that are starting to have their own scents at the entrance so that you get this five uh, cents experience, five cents. Oh, experience. Um, have you ever considered going into that and, and like selling to not just individual consumers, but businesses? Yeah, so we've started to do more of like re smaller residences and, and businesses where they, where they want to have a scent to fill their WeWork space or something like that, um, where we can kind of create something. You, they start by creating something here and then we can translate it into a diffuser or mm. whatever, depending on the the space and the business um, and as you say a lot of people are more interested in that these days yeah um, yeah we've done workout studios like box and flow nearby one of our last guests yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So that's so that. cool yeah they're they're uh they we made the, the scent for their studio we've done some, some smaller business like that creating a scent for them um and that's um and that's a, it's something that i think is is is, a, is an industry that a sort of a business that we want to we would love to get more into yeah it's it's expanding into new categories so what is next for olfactory so, you know, that's, that's part of it. Um, I think yeah, it's creating sense for, uh, for business, figuring out how to translate this into more sort of like, like um, doing this in other places. So in, mm -hmm. other, in other businesses, like you could take this into uh, uh, another business that just sells fragrances and, and make custom versions uh, in, in that space. So we, we're sort of expanding the physical idea as well, while also trying to build this online experience. Well, I think the online experience is brilliant. We've talked so much about Olfactory today. Um, I'd love for you to share some advice to aspiring entrepreneurs. Sure. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it. Look, it depends on what you're doing. I think a little bit. We spoke a little earlier about you know if you can raise as much money as you raise more money than you need. People say this all the time, but I think that's really important. If you can get as much more money than you, you'll, there's always going to be. You can have the best spreadsheet in the world, but there's going to be overruns and there's mm. going to be things you don't expect. Or there's going to be new opportunities that you want to exploit and you want to do it like fast. So yeah. you don't, you want to, if you can get more money than you need to start up, that's always great. Um, I would also say just as a general thing, don't let a no stop you. One no stop you from doing something. And don't let one yes convince you of doing something. Mm. You want to like, people, you, even the, even the most trusted advisor, someone who has all the experience in an area and all the things, and they, you really trust them with everything to do with what you're trying to do. Um, they don't know all the things that you know as well. Yeah. And so you want to yeah. take, if you get five no's on something from all experience, then yeah, probably don't do probably, it. Probably don't. Rethink it. But like, don't let one thing discourage you and don't, don't let one yes, one no discourage you and don't let one yes convince you as well. So do it. some market research before being committed to an idea yeah or just crowdsource your advice i'd say totally. rather than just having well letting one person because people advice is free that's fantastic advice speaking <laughs> of someone that advice is free um i pre i appreciate that it's been wonderful having you on the show jj and thank, thank you. you for joining us thanks to everyone who tuned in today if you want to learn more about olfactory visit olfactorynyc.com or follow them on instagram at olfactorynyc and that is all for this episode of school of hustle Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you can stream or download podcasts. And if you like what you heard, please, please, please leave us a review, share with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We'll see you next time. Bye.